Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. Today is the last day of Measure for Measure. We have made it to the very last monologue that's the very last little tidbit of anything that is said in this play and it is said of course by the Duke. So all of this stuff has happened. It has been revealed that the Duke was Friar Lodovic all along. He um, had Angelo marry Mariana then pardoned Angela, er, and then sentenced him to death, but then pardoned him because Claudio's not actually dead. Barnadine has been pardoned. Claudio has been pardoned. Um, all of these sorts of things. Everything seems to be coming together. And the Duke may have proposed to Isabella in yesterday's monologue, where he's like, give me your hand and what's mine is yours and all of that sort of stuff, which is kind of interesting. But then he stops and he's like, okay, everything's been settled except for Lucio, because Lucio is the one who, when the duke was dressed as the duke lucio was talking bad about the friar that was actually the duke and when the duke was dressed as a friar lucio was talking bad about the duke to the friar dressed as the duke so basically lucio has been saying bad things about the duke regardless of what he's wearing all over the place so he's like there's one more thing to be settled he's like that guy that guy needs to be punished for what he's done so let's find any woman in this town that he has slept with, and especially if any of them, he got them pregnant, because he told me that he got somebody pregnant once, then he should marry her, and then as soon as he's married to her, he should be killed. And Lucio's like, what, I, I'd rather be whipped than killed, and he's like, yeah, well, we'll have you whipped and hung up and killed all at the same time. And, yeah, then, like, Lucio's like, but the this punishment is kind of overkill if that's not an inappropriate word to use and the duke says slandering a prince deserves it she claudio that you wronged look you restore joy to you mariana love her angelo i have confessed her and know her virtue thanks good friend aeschylus for thy much goodness there's more behind that is more graduate Thanks, provost, for thy care and secrecy. We shall employ thee in a worthier place. Forgive him, Angelo, that brought you home the head of Ragazine for Claudio's. The offense pardons itself. Dear Isabel, I have a motion much imports your good. Whereto, if you'll a willing ear incline, what's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. So bring us to our palace, where we'll show what's yet behind that's meat you all should know. And that's the end of the play. So he's basically, like, he has Lucio carted off to be married and then executed. And then he goes around the room and wishes everybody well. And then kind of sort of proposes to Mariana, or not Mariana, to Isabella again. And then he's like, come on, there's even more surprises that you all should, should know about, so let's go have a party. And that's the end of the play. So, to sum up, this is a problem play. It's, it feels like a happy ending, except, except the Duke proposed to a nun. So I guess like the, the weddings that are supposed to happen at the end of comedies would be Claudio and... Um, Juliet, right? That's her name. <laughs> I've completely forgotten. Um, it would seem to be like Claudio can now get married and Angelo is married to Mariana, but he doesn't necessarily want to be married to her and she does want to be married to him. Angelo has been knocked down several pegs. The, the ones who come out of this like in a good spot are the Provost and Aeschylus. Isabella now, in addition to being propositioned in exchange for for her brother's life, which is like the worst would you rather question ever, is now has to face the do I want to enter the nunnery that I planned on entering two days ago when this play started, or do I now marry the Duke? Can I can I not marry the Duke? Because the Duke's a little crazy at this point, and Lucio was probably just taken to be killed. So, it's a problem play. 
it's a problem play. And I know a lot of people, I, I've been in a production of this and I know that there was a lot of discussion around it when we were doing it. Like, why does the Duke do all of these things and why is he in hiding? And, and is this cool that stuff works out this way? And isn't it weird that he proposes and all of that sort of stuff. And those are, those are just questions that each person, each company, each actor gets to work through as they work on this play. Um, I do think that there's a lot of fun stuff in this play. I have a soft spot for the character of Lucio because a good friend of mine played him in a production that we were in together. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just, it's kind of a weird, kind of a weird play that's set up to be sort of a romantic comedy thing but then deals with all of these issues of morality and purity and gender roles and blah, 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 and then ends with two sort of side-ish characters, like two secondary characters, Aeschylus and the Provost, gaining the most out of anyone really in the play. Anyway, that's Measure for Measure. We're done with that one. That's play number 20 that we can knock off the list. And tomorrow we're gonna start in on much ado about nothing. And I know you're probably sitting there thinking, well, what about the Merry Wives of Windsor? And what about the Merchant of Venice? Well, since we've set the precedent already by starting this whole process with a Midsummer Night's Dream, and since we skipped over the comedy of errors, we will be covering the Merchant of Venice and the Merry Wives of Windsor when we get to the T's. So we're skipping those two for right now. We'll cover them when we get to the T's for the... And tomorrow we get to start in on Much Ado About Nothing, which is a really fun play. A lot of it is in verse, or a lot of it is not in verse. It's in prose. And there aren't a whole lot of monologues, so we really only get about two weeks to get through that play, two and a half ish. So there's going to be a lot of just me talking at you, not quite as many words. We'll see how all of that goes, but I hope you I hope you continue along on the Shakespeare journey as we dig into much ado about nothing starting tomorrow. I'll see you then. Mwah.